Happy Monday, friends. This week, we're visiting one of California's fascinating state parks. Join me as we take a step back in time at Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. Over a century ago, the town of Allensworth was founded and dedicated to the dignity of the human spirit. Allen Allensworth was born into slavery in Kentucky in 1842. He escaped during the Civil War and joined the Union Navy. Following the war, he became a teacher, a sought-after speaker, and an ordained minister. He was appointed chaplain to the 24th Infantry Regiment. Colonel Allensworth blazed new trails in adult education by establishing uh, education programs for African-American soldiers in the U.S. Army, and he became the first African-American to reach the rank of Colonel. After his time in the military, Colonel Allensworth settled with his wife Josephine and their daughters in Los Angeles and he was inspired to establish a self-sufficient African-American community free of racial discrimination. And in 1908, along with Professor William Payne, he established the town of Allensworth. In the heart of the San Joaquin Valley, covering over 800 acres along the Santa Fe rail line, this was California's first community to be founded, funded, and governed by African Americans. In fact, Allensworth inspired many looking for a better life. People came from all over the country to this town, and in some cases, people purchased their properties sight unseen. The, the Phillips House belonged to Sergeant James Phillips, who served with Colonel Allensworth in the 24th Infantry. You can take a peek inside numerous homes and buildings here to see how they would have been decorated over a century ago. Freedom colonies like Allensworth were created between 1865 and 1930 by formerly enslaved people during the Reconstruction era. When you visit this state park today, you can see some of the important historic buildings preserved as they would have been when the town was established over a hundred years ago. Now, Colonel Allensworth and his wife's residence was a kit home delivered by train to Allensworth. It was assembled on site in 1911, and it's still furnished to reflect the time period for visitors today. Mrs. Josephine Allensworth was a gifted musician. You can see the piano inside the home as well as the dining room. Education was highly valued here. Miss Josephine Allensworth purchased the town's first one-room schoolhouse, which was quickly outgrown and turned into the Mary Dickerson Memorial Library. And later, the Tulare County went on to make the library part of its free system, supplying 50 books per month. This two-room schoolhouse was built in 1912 to replace the smaller schoolhouse. Now, this building was also used as a polling place and a community center here. The Ashby House was the first house to be built in Allensworth. John Ashby and his wife ran a small dairy here. The Ashby's Dairy Barn was built specifically to accommodate their business, and it held 10 to 12 cows at any given time.
Frank Miller arrived in Allensworth from the Bay Area in 1911, and he set up a successful barber shop here. And the community orchestra practiced in the shop too. Founded in 1984, Friends of Allensworth is the official nonprofit cooperating association for Colonel Allensworth State Historic Park. You can even contact the park for a tour with park staff and request the African American tour with Friends of Allensworth immediately afterward. The Singleton General Store and Post Office here also serve as a museum and store for the association. Joshua and Henrietta Singleton arrived in Allensworth in early 1910. They operated the general store here, selling canned goods, coffee, cookies, candy, and more. Joshua actually served as the postmaster, and he taught music and organized the town band, and Henrietta was a midwife and a nurse. The Allensworth Hotel was constructed in 1910 as an investment property financed by Elizabeth Doherty, a wealthy Oakland businesswoman. Mrs. Doherty hired John and Clara Morris as the hotel managers, and early residents recalled Mrs. Morris's delicious cooking and the mechanical skills of John Morris here. The Howard House served mainly as temporary housing, um, including for town residents who were waiting for their permanent homes to be built. Unfortunately, the original structure was in such disrepair, it had to be reconstructed, but they tried to salvage as many of the original elements to do that as possible. The Heinzman store was the largest store in Allensworth and the town's longest lasting business, serving the community for over 35 years. Everything from clothing to tools to canned goods could be purchased here. The Heinzmans built both the general store and their house in 1911. They were very active in the community. Mr. Heinzman served the town as a justice of the peace, an insurance agent, a realtor, and a notary republic. Make sure to take time and stop by the visitor center when you're here. You can learn more about Colonel Allensworth and the history of this incredible town. Historic town photographs and memorabilia are on display here, and plans are currently underway for a new, larger visitor center, which will replace this one in the coming years. There are well over a dozen historic structures for you to explore as you stroll the streets here. The First Baptist Church served as a place of worship for over 40 years. Now, the original church was torn down, but back in the year 2000, it was rebuilt from salvaged materials here. Frank and Laura Smith were early residents at Allensworth. They built their home and planted what was known as the best truck garden in the district. After Mr. Smith passed away, Mrs. Smith opened her home to boarders and continued cultivating her successful garden.
the self-guided cell phone audio tour is a wonderful resource available and each stop provides additional Allensworth information. The Dotsons came to Allensworth from Oakland, California, and by 1914, Mr. Dotson was elected constable of Allensworth and the family had opened a restaurant in the front of their home. Mrs. Mary Gross established the Scott Gross Drugstore here in 1911. As a trained nurse, she provided medical care to many of the town's early residents. This store also provided goods specifically for the women of Allensworth, including cosmetics, jewelry, and clothing. The Carters were early Allensworth residents, arriving in 1910, and they had many horses in their stables over the years. The town grew and developed until 1914, when Colonel Allensworth tragically died, and then the Santa Fe Railroad moved its rail stop away from the town. The following years brought more hardships with drought, poor crop yield, and a failing water supply. In fact, in 1966, arsenic was found in the water supply, and Allensworth was scheduled for demolition. But in 1974, the California Department of Parks and Recreations purchased this land and it became Colonel Allen's Worth State Historic Park. Today, the collection of historic buildings showcase the incredible history of this place. placement of the original railroad station near the tracks was a key factor in the decision to establish Allensworth at this location. Trains brought mail, supplies, building materials, and there was an average of four to five thousand dollars worth of business conducted in Allensworth every month until the construction of a railway spur in 1914 in an adjacent town which eventually led to this station closing in 1930. Every year, there's an annual rededication celebration here and an old time jubilee, which recreates the festive atmosphere of Allensworth after the harvest when the town would throw a big party. This wonderful historic park is open from 9 a.m. till sunset daily and admission is free. However, I would encourage you to call ahead for a tour with a ranger or friends of Allensworth for an extra special experience here. Thank you so much for joining me this week at one of California's important historic state parks. Now, for more information on Allensworth, see my full blog post at flyingdawnmarie.com. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe. Until next week, I hope you find adventure and encouragement wherever you go. Bye.